Hi, this is Eric Martin from Board Game Geek News. Gonna be looking today at no, not Pagoda. Uh, this was debut designed by Arvidi Fuller, designer. Some people can even pronounce at the beginning of 2014. Arne de Fischer, Arv Fuller. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, just because he hadn't published anything before, and people don't know how to pronounce German. So. His debut design, a nice classic two-player game coming out from Pegasus. At roughly the same time, Zog Verlog released a trick-taking game, Schaffer Schoten. And now, at the end of 2014, Herr Fuller has come up with El Gaucho, coming from Argentum in English, German, and French editions. A two to four player game in about an hour. What is with this? Three games in a year from a debut designer? Oh, kudos, Herr Fuller. But what is this? Here's the layout for a four-player game of El Gaucho, and I've done some preliminary work, laying everything out and having people claim actions and so on. Each player is going to start with one to three cattle, and the cattle come in five types or colors, and in each type of cattle, the numbers, large numbers on here, go from one to 12. Okay, those are all the same. Most of them have a small number on the side. That's about half of the large value. So you're going to start with one to three cattle, depending on the sum of those cattle. And each player is going to start by reserving an action on the board. And you lay out four rows of cattle. And you lay out cattle one by one, mysteriously off the top of the deck, until the sum is 20 or more, or you fill the row. Okay, and then you stop. Then you're gonna take rounds of actions. And at the start of each round, the start player is gonna roll dice, nine dice with four players, seven with three, five with two. You roll them into the corral here. And then you're going to take actions by claiming two dice and then doing something with the numbers rolled. So what you want to do is going to depend on what you have already started collecting, what other people are collecting, what actions you have available to you, and of course, what's on the dice. So if Mr. Green is going first with a black and white cattle of 11, you can collect cattles into your herd only in ascending or descending numerical order because you're a bit of an OCD cowboy. Okay, you want things nice and neat. Little bossies lined up, going straight. All right, so what you want to do then, maybe you take two dice, the sum to 10. There's a black and white cow here that's 10. I put my guy on top and claim him. That's it for my turn, I'm done. Okay, next player takes two dice and does something as well. Now, you don't have to just claim something. Maybe you want to, let's see, I've got a two and a black two. I've got a black one here, so I wanna add on to what I'm going. Maybe I wanna take that. But sometimes you can't pay for a cow in full. You gotta do it in half measures. Maybe I take a three and we've got a black six here with a small three on it. I lie the guy down. He's, he's, you know, put in the claim on it, but he's not really uh, awake yet. He's not doing a great job. On a future turn, I can take another three or two dice to sum the three and then stand them up. And why that's important is you can claim tiles. You can take them from the board only with a guy who's actually paying attention because, you know, he's checking his iPhone. He's not doing his job. All right, other people are gonna be taking actions as well. Now, you don't have to just go and claim cattle. You can also claim action spaces on the board. You can't go into a space where you already have a guy. And when you claim an action, you cannot use it that same turn. You are claiming an action for use on a future turn or this one, which is used only at the end of a turn. Okay, so if blue is next. Uh, I could use a five, I'm gonna reserve this action. Uh, I've got a guy here, which I reserved at the start of the game. Everyone gets one action to start. Well, this action lets you cl claim a phantom die with a number that you want from one to six. So I'm gonna use this one. No, I wanna hurt the next player. I'm gonna use a four, pretend I've got a three, so I got a seven, and claim this one here, okay. Next player goes, oh, and I have to remove this guy because I used him, all right. The yellow player goes and uh, does something else. Let's pretend I've got a three and a one here just so I can do a nice example. I've got four, which sums to half of this. He's gonna lie down and fill the row. 
Okay. At the end of a round, after everyone has taken their dice action, you now check each of the rows of cattle and you see if a row is full. And if a row is filled, then anyone who has a standing gaucho takes that cattle tile and adds it to their herd or starts a herd, as the case may be. You must add tiles only to the right. So 11 to 10. Hey, super. This comes in, this comes in. This guy, snoozing, he gets nothing. Everyone gets their gauchos back. You refill the row until it sums to 20 or more. There we go. We pass the dice to the next player and we have another round. Okay. What about these actions? Where do they come in? You can use an action that you've claimed on a turn, okay? And they affect the turn in some way. So, as I mentioned, this one gives you a phantom die of your choice from one to six. How do you get it? Well, you take a die that's valued one to three, or two dice that sum to a value, or two or three, remove that die, and you get to load it with one of your gauchos. Okay. These two actions are the same, where you load it, you have a one to three, and you load it in here. Okay, I'll explain these two in a minute when they make more sense. This one, you need a die that's five or sum of five. All right, what does he do? Well, he lets you stand up two guys who are sleeping. So at the start of next turn, red rolls. Mm, I'm going to take a three to do this, and now I'm going to use my red guy to stand up two snoozers. Boom. Okay, when those rows are filled, now I will claim them. It's also important to stand them up because the other action you can use here is if some guy is snoozing in the field, you can kick him out and take his place, standing up on that tile because you are paying more attention. He gets compensation equal to the value of the cattle tile, but he doesn't get the tile itself. So. And this action here, which you can claim only with a value with a die of six or a dice of some of six, well, you can look at the tiles here secretly, and you take one tile or two if they sum the four or less, you add it to a row, let's go in this row, and you put a standing guy on it. All right, super. And now you put this back and you add another one to it. So there's always options available to you. So you get to immediately claim something, but you don't know what. Okay, hope it works out for you. This tile over here, to do action space with a four. This action space over here, which you can claim with a four, you get to steal a tile from someone's ongoing herd and then add it to the right of your own herd. Okay. There are, no one is collecting black and white cows. So I'll just let this guy sit here right now. I'm not gonna do anything with him. All right. So each round, you're gonna be putting guys out on the board. You'll be claiming action spaces. You'll be using these actions on your turn and trying to build up herds of cattle. Okay, why? Well, you are going to try to make money and you do that by selling these herds. You must sell a herd if you try to add a tile to it that would break the order sequence. So if I have a three and a seven and I add a nine and then later on I get a red four, whoops, I have to break my herd and start again with my red herd. I have to sell these. And how you determine the price of a herd when you sell it, take the number of tiles and you multiply it by the highest tile in that herd. And now some of these other actions come into play. Okay. If I have this action here, when I get tiles at the end of a round, I can remove my guy and insert that tile and preserve the numerical purity of those cows. And I can keep going. All right, before I had a lowly four, but because I got a nine in this herd, that herd is valued at nine. All right, that tile is valued at nine. Okay, this space over here, I can sell a herd as long as it has at least two cattle in it, and I get whatever the current value would be, 36 in this case, four tiles times nine, plus an additional five. Okay, and then I, of course I can start building again if I get more red tiles. If I look like I'm gonna be claiming another valuable red tile, then I won't do that. But if no red is out there, or someone else is doing it, I'm competing with someone else, maybe I just wanna sell it and I get a little more money rather than wait till the end of the game. All right. It's got, it's back to the stealing here. If I steal something, I get to put it at the end of my line. Oh, hey, Mr. Yellow over here has got a, 
uh, 12 red. I probably want to be stealing his stuff. So that would give him an incentive to sell it off as quickly as possible. Otherwise, I'm going to steal his 12, slap it down here, and now I'm getting 60 points instead of 36. One tile, jack the price up quite a bit. All right. That's what the selling comes in. How does the game end? The game ends when the tiles run out. Although not really, because what you do first is you fill as many rows as possible, okay, just like normal. You play one more complete round with everyone rolling the dice, claiming things, putting out gouges, so forth and so on. And then you have one last round just using the actions that you have already claimed, right? Standing up guys, maybe you put out one last tile with someone standing on it, or you steal something, sell something for extra money, all sorts of possibilities for what you can do. Okay, you then claim all the tiles where you have a guy standing up. No, he gets nothing. And then you sell everything, whatever you have, all the herds based on wherever the value is. Whoever has the most points wins. There's an overview of El Gaucho, which I played twice on a prototype copy from, from Argentum, uh, once with two players, once with four. And there's some differences between two and four. You pull out with two of one type of cattle and you have to start with a few more tiles to look through and a couple other differences, but nothing major. And it's interesting because with a four player game, we were kind of just in our own world, collecting our, our cows. I had two types of cattle, which I had seven in one herd and four in the other. Just a huge number. Uh, where people just kind of just focus on their own stuff and they didn't really mess with other people. We had one theft the entire game. The secret stash where you look through the pile and pull one, I think we used that once. There just wasn't much going on in terms of us doing those actions, which didn't help that I missed the part in the rules where you each start with an action at the beginning of the game. Okay, that's my fault there. So game two, we did that a little more where uh, we had two players. Of course, you've got one opponent. So you're going to be trying to mess with other people a little bit. We had a few more thefts, a few more actions, but still not very much. All right? It's just focused on cattle, 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 cattle. And again, we finished the game within two points of each other. So it's kind of like that learning game where you're, you're both doing the same thing because you don't know any better. You see what other people do and you do that too. All right? And you kind of play off each other that way without a real plan. You're just doing stuff to to you know, see what happens. And then rereading the rules before doing this preview, which you know, I try to do and try to express the rules correctly, get across you know, some, an overview of the game correctly, right? Two things in the rule pointed out like, uh, tip, you know, using the special actions well is the key to victory. And another thing was talking about selling cattle as much as you can, that is using the action where you're going to be selling a herd early and getting extra money. Well, gee, uh, if I had done that in a you know, two-player game, I would have won. Uh, just one little action. You don't focus on those, those little details, or at least I don't on initial play. I'm just playing, just doing stuff. And that's how we come out with this like sort of lockstep progression on the path. All right, so there's two games experience, and I can see some of what I would do differently in the future. All right, you have to be a little meaner in terms of taking things that people want uh, and learning, you know, the, the marginal difference between tiles is not always that important. If I've got a herd of four tiles, all right, that goes up to 10, that's 40. If I add an 11 onto the end, okay, that's 55. So that's one tile, but it's not that much difference. But if I have four tiles, that's one, two, three, four, that's 16. And then if I add an 11, that's 55, which is huge. So there's that issue of how you're gonna concentrate on building your herds and how you're going to not let other people build herds, right? You can try to steal from them more. They get compensation, yes, when you steal from them, but if you're stealing the only high value tile from a big row, that hits them hugely, right? If I had a one, two, three, four, 11, someone steals the 11, when the value of that herd just plummets. But we weren't really paying attention to all that. We're just doing our own thing, right? Or cowboys with blinders. We're wearing the, the shade, just not looking at what's going on. So, 
Game number three from Herr Fuller for 2014, El Gaucho. And hopefully that gives you some idea of how it works.